Welcome back inside the track in Oakville, Ontario, and welcome back to the President's Cup here in 2023 as we wrap up day number three with a good one on deck. Sego, Siwagwego to the Mohawk Nation back in the territory of Akwesasne as well, of course. As the Oakville Rock, two and one, will take on the Muskies of Snake Island, who are also two and one. And Jake Kelly with you, Pat Gregoire as well. Patty, this one's a biggie. Massive for both sides, both of them sitting at two and one. We've seen how everything's playing out. Ladner, the lone undefeated squad, but these two teams want to keep pace with them. Low the whistle, let's play some Dewa Alado. As we're underway here from the track. Muskies in black, Oakville in white. And a big old battle for the opening possession. That'll be finally won by the Oakville Rock. As Brett Hensor finally claimed that ball. So here comes Lanchberry. Here comes Andrew Q. Dan Littner will join them as well. As Oakville will shoot the first shot, and Damood, who gets the start here for the Muskies, to nobody's surprise, makes his first stop. Nick Rose in the other end. And both these goaltenders, Pat Gregoire, coming into this one with exceptional numbers. Nick Rose, 2 and 1, 832 save percentage, a goals against of 621. Damood, also 2 and 1, an 848 save percentage, a goals against of 6.67. Hope you took the under tonight. We shall see as Hewitt fanned on a shot. Keo will run out of time. I mean, based on the defenses and the goaltenders, you got to assume it's going to be a tightly checked game. But look at the offense on both sides of the ball. Andrew Q, Ryan Lansbury, Josh Dalek for the Rock. Snake Island with some studs of their own as well. Oh, Lansbury just took one right in the chops. That's going to draw a call. And we'll get our first penalty of the game here to Snake Island. As Oakville playing their second game of the day, impressive over the Edmonton Miners earlier. And a convincing win for them, 14 to five. Kanawagi took on the Tomahawks and they improved their record to two and one as they won 10 to four. And then Ladner in a tight one against Six Nations in a low scoring battle, but they go away winning by five at the end of that one and what was a rough and tumble affair between those two. But like you mentioned, Six Nations now one and three. Ladner is three and oh. Dowick shoots, Stamu moving the wrong way and then Lanchbury pulled the trigger quickly and hit the pipe. And it remains scoreless here, but lots of time to work with on the man advantage as Lanchbury will come to the point. Flip it over the shoulder. One more down to the crease. Up it comes to the point, Lanchbury to Q. Had to reach across his body, and then goes Bar, what, Pat Gregoire? Bar, Mexico. Andrew Q with goal number 11 of this tournament. A little bit of a slow start in game one. Struggled to tickle twine against Six Nations. But since then, it has been all systems go. What a shot from Andrew Q. Look where this thing enters the goal. Bingo. Ooh. Can't stop it. As Oakville dropped their opening game in the very first day of the tournament to the Six Nations Rubman, 5-4 in what was an outstanding goaltending performance by both goalies in that one. But Dusty Hill... Just slightly better than Nick Rose in that one, but it was the offense for the Rock that was concerning. They have seemingly found their game here on day number three. As they mentioned, put up a lot against the Miners. And that trend has continued. Well, they first they put up 16 against Tuscarora. So the offense has come to life here for Oakville, and you had a feeling it would. And I don't know if that opening loss will come back to burn them or not. It might. But if they continue to play like they have over the last couple, I think they're going to be okay. I think there's a lot of chatter about how the offense has come to life. The defense was phenomenal in game one. Thought they took a step back in game two. But the way they imposed their will against that high-powered Edmonton team, Triolo, 
Uh, Shut him down. Anderson. Anderson. Nothing. nothing. Like they just took it to those two guys. There's Lintner. Going through his pregame warm up. Says he's taking that pretty seriously as you want to get through the week here at the President's Cup. Got to take care of the body. As Oakville with the 1 nothing lead. Looking for two. And Damood with the stick save. I think it goes without saying Damood's going to have to be real sharp. Well, a main reason why Snake Allen was able to get past the Aquasasne Bucks in seven games. And he'll need to be good as Reza Teretz with five goals, five assists coming into this game. Gets his first shot of the contest. That's turned aside by Nick Rose. Lanchberry following up. Tucking. And tried to float one far corner. That one missed. As a Kearney with still 13 on the shot clock here. As Alex Q with it now. Finds an open man. The crank over the top. And another stop for Nick Damu. Another 30 to work with here for Oakville. As Matt Sawyer says, stay in play. Q of the Andrew variety back on. Into the middle of the goal scorer, and he whistled that one. My rebound chance for Robinson stopped on the doorstep. As he's picked his game up in the last couple for the Rock as well. And really, it's Q, Robinson, Lanchbury, Dowick leading the way here for the Rock. And another good crowd on hand here for the President's Cup nightcapper on day three. Hope you're enjoying it on the JVI Sports Network, wherever you may be watching from. And still another lacrosse game here to go in the world of box lacrosse. That'll come up later tonight back on the West Coast. As Firth, Harris, and Rose off his goal line to cut down the angle and make that stop. Ball loose, not for long. As the Rock will come away with it here. And up through center for Mazuka. Drop it off. Here's the shot. And that one turned away by Damood, who looks to be off to a good start here. As Brandon Slade, who did not play in their opener, the transition specialist in the Rock lineup for this one. Josh Dowick takes a hack and a whack and a flipper over his shoulder. A fine cue across, cutting through was Lintner. And good ball movement breaks down at the last second. I think Slade's going to be an X factor for this Rock team going forward. You mentioned it, missing that first game. Scores a pair of goals in that game against Tuscarora. He's got some ability to stay in play as well. We've seen him do that with the Toronto Rock. Muskies looking to break the seal here with Reza Terrets. As he searches for an open body and finds one. Uh, Jake Rice unable to get a pass. Nick Rose. And in come the Rock here with Chris Weir. He'll make the change. Down it. That light blue head on his stick. Uh, so he'll work with Robinson. Shovel feed comes. Back away. Up high now. For Jason Knox, who let that one get away. And Tyler Halls will dash after the loose ball. They'll reset the shot clock here. As Halls picks it up. And out come the Muskies on offense. Coached by Josh Sanderson and Galiwade Mitchell. You got Matt Sawyer over there on the Oakville bench. Who also is the man in charge for the big club, the Toronto Rock. Vaughn Harris, who went down in the second game of the tournament with an apparent ankle injury, but returned the next day and has seemingly no ill effects from what looked to be a pretty serious injury. Yeah, we thought that, you know, we... We were certain we weren't going to see him for the remainder of the night, which was true, but the next day, 10 o'clock, bright and early, he was playing. Thomas. Oh, he had Rose at his mercy and couldn't find the far post. And Sheldon Burns through center. Snake Island making a conservative effort to make sure they get back either in reverse transition or getting to the bench, making sure this Rock team, with all the athletes at the back end, don't make them pay. Ball first side. Nobody open inside. Lanchbury way out high. Lindner finds an open space. And gets a shot off and then an interference call. Well, Zach Kearney will give the ball back to Snake Island. 
And Luke Magnum. Muskies dodge a bullet there. It's not often we see Dan Littner miss from there. Nice trail check, though, from the Muskies defender, Ryan Thomas. Hewitt's had a nice tourney. He's out there with Harris. The legend himself, Joe Hall, patrolling in his familiar number 11. And has the ball on the far side with Reza Terrence. Feet inside and a moving pick call on Snake Island. Weir. Numbers here for Oakville, maybe. Lanchbury. Over his shoulder to Dowick. Does not work to the top? And go to Knox. And now Q. Andrew Q looking for a shot. And that went right into a defender stick. Comes right back to him. And he sends it to the back of the goal to make it 2-0 Oakville. Andrew Q, his outside heater right now is on point. It took him a little while to get going. It's Q. Picked up that, and it's kind of an unfortunate bounce for Jerry Stotts playing great defense. Almost looks like he's got Q in his back pocket, blocks the shot, but then goes right back into the stick of Q. First we see the overhand, then he recognized, gets it back, throws that side arm. Well, I honestly believe that, I mean, Andrew Q sometimes can take a little too long to load up the gun, if you will, and I feel like he shoots it so hard that when he takes a little something off his shot and gets it away a little quicker, he's yep. so much more dangerous with it. And I think he'll learn that as his career goes along. He doesn't need to overpower goaltenders with his shot because it's heavy to begin with, but it's super accurate when he takes just a touch off. We saw it right there. The first shot was a monstrous overhand rip. The other one, he just kind of places it around his defender. And this morning against Edmonton, like he was literally just picking his spot yeah. against Tate. This is Knox. He'll load one. And that one goes off of Bonnie and Skyward as the far end of the arena is starting to fill up. As the Toronto Rock Bucks getting full as well to watch the Rock here. As Demut will launch up for Magna. Trying to bring it in with a man draped all over him. And he'll come up with that ball nicely as he comes all the way back into his own zone here for Thompson. I get the pleasure to watch a lot of Luke Magnet's game, and he, he's a guy that doesn't get the credit that he deserves, but here in this tournament, it seems he's elevated his game even more. He's been fantastic for the Muskies. Late in the clock here for Joe Hall. And he's running out of time as he tried to shovel one in front to somebody, and the shot clock will expire. There's not much happening offensively quite yet for Snake Island as they trail 2-0 as the Rock outshoot them 11-7. As we're across the halfway mark of period number one already. And I never thought I would say something like that during our third game of the day here, Pat. But this one whipping by. Wintner. And look out. Clear out pick there for Q. Will get caught. And here come the Muskies. Jerry Stotts. And his shot blocked. One of those pickups from the Bucks, along with Reza Terrence. And look out. That'll be a penalty on Sheldon Burns, who got off a pretty good two-hander and made a pretty loud noise as well that always helps the official make the call. So they'll set up here, but late in the shot clock, got to get some to goal, and Nick Rose will squeeze it. But the Muskies trailing by two will get their first power play of the evening. Maybe this is what the offense needs to get going. We'll get a look at the penalty here. Yeah, I mean, that's just on a bare arm. Ball gone. Got to call it. Uh, Got to call it for sure. I think what Burns wasn't pleased with is Halls looks over at Grenier. Then Grenier's arm goes up. That's what he was arguing. But I don't think Burns had much to argue there. That was a pretty healthy hack. Harris, Thomas, Rezateritz, Keel, and Firth down on the crease. Oh! That one let fly there from Thomas. It might have caught the outside of the post. Either way, it stayed out. They will reset the shot clock as Reza Terrence will run it back in. Looks like they're going to go with a box and one with Stephen Keel in the middle. Keel running a pick high as they'll slip into the middle. Reza Terrence comes to Thomas again. Back to Reza Terrence. And Joey Rez. On the board here for the Muskies, it's 2-1. I love this look, and it's a, 
a little taste of his own medicine for Matt Sawyer because he loves running this with Stephen Keel in the middle. The boxing one, he's just crashing bang. Look, it just draws immediately draws would, yeah. everyone in, and it gives so much time and space for Buffalo Joe to uncork that underarm. Pure shooter. And how nice must that be? You know, you lose a dramatic seven-game series in the Three Nations final, and you think, oh, man, my season's up. And then you picked up, and you're off to the President's Cup for the team that just beat you. Not bad. Not bad indeed, and what an ad. He's been leading this team in scoring. That's his sixth goal. 11th point of the tournament. Hall back on. Rice back on. This is Hewitt. Wheeling into traffic. Now Joe Hall with eight on the shot clock. Deed up there. He'll spin away. Load one up. Drive it in. Joe Hall looks short side. And he'll fall in the crease. Rebound chance right there. And that's denied by Nick Rose as well. Wiley veteran Joe Hall dialing back the clock there. <laughs> it's unbelievable. I don't know what it is. 16-17 President's Cup for the Snake Island legend. Here's Q into the middle. Room right on, and Damood will take that one in the belly pad. No trouble there. Not the A release from AQ. Keel. Down the wall for Von Harris. 15 on the clock, and Harris trying to find a shooting lane. Sends one to the goal, and Rose will take it off the end wall and outlet quickly. Here's Adam J to push ahead. Drop it off. Let it fly. And that one will end up way out of play off the stick of Brandon Slate. That's a great recovery by the Muskies to get back in transition, take that scoring chance away. Luke Mangan firing off the bench. Rock had nothing there. Atwood out for a shift of oak. Joe Hall. Passes off to Atwood. He'll go set a pick for him and roll to the middle as Atwood tried to fake the shot and lost the handle. A lead feed here for Q. Off this near side, but no trans. Well, maybe transition here for Robinson. And Damood. A confident stop there. Free flowing in the middle stages of period number one. I think it was last game you saw the Muskies. You mentioned how good Damood is at. Not just making the initial save, but gobbling up rebounds. Just doesn't give up the juicy rebound offer. It's a defender's dream. Firth. Steered into the corner by Jay. Still with it across the top. Down to two on the shot clock. And Firth from 38 feet out. Missed the goal. And it's Oakville ball once again here with this one goal lead as we're under six to go in the first. A nice defensive stand by the Rock there. They have so many athletes out the back door. They can pressure the ball, but they still have enough back support. Well, the Rock back to work here. Lanchbury loading, and he'll go across the queue. Waits for a pick, gets one. Kearney will open up, but it's Lanchbury on the bouncer, far piping in. And no chance for Tamud on that rocket from Ryan Lanchbury. A lot of pure goal scorers in this tournament. Ryan Lanchbury is one of them. 87 points in the regular season last year. Leading or scorer year, here sorry. in the OSL, I believe. Yep. And at 87 points, sorry, this season in the playoffs, 32. And again, we talked about it, I think, in the first game we saw The Rock. He really had a slow start to his professional career. Yeah. It really took him a while to get... Like, concerningly slow. Yes. And just about halfway through the year, something clicked. I don't know if it was confidence, if it was experience, or if it was just getting opportunity. But I tell you, if he's shooting the ball like that during the NLL season, he's going to get a lot of floor time with the Georgia Swarm. Could have been coaching Eddie Como and Sean Ferris in the house here for yes. this one. And no two better guys to learn early from in your pro career than those two. No doubt. Big smiles on their face after that goal. There's an outside crank from Knox. And Damood. Well, outlet bench side to Luke Magnum. 
who will walk to the bench for a line change. We're on day three, Pat. Guys are walking to the bench for line changes now. And still more days to come here at the President's Cup. Another full loaded slate tomorrow for day number four. Ladner Tuscarora has a save by Nick Rose. Edmonton Snake Island could be a very interesting yes. matchup depending on the score outcome here tonight. Oh, could it ever. Six Nations Kanawage and then the big matchup at night depending on what happens here. Ladner 3 0. Oakville potentially 3 1 if they win this one could set up a massive game tomorrow night. Q, high and wide. I think, I think even if Oakville is to drop this game or if it's a tie, it's still a massive game. Yeah. But I think a little more goes into it if... Well, you know, and quite potentially could be a gold medal matchup preview. Not to get ahead of ourselves here. Kanawage, Snake Island, they'll all have something to say about it. But the way, it, <coughs> excuse me, it stands now, you would, you know, think Tuscarora, they're in tough. They haven't won a game yet. As we're trying to run onto a loose ball here. And he'll pick it up and he'll ring the crossbar with it as it goes up into a fan in the ceiling. Six Nations dropping their third game of the tournament, now one and three. But a, a good team here like Kahnawake, Snake Island. Edmonton. Somebody is going to be on the outside looking in. Mm -hmm. Chance on the crease. Demu. Another stop and a hard hit there on Knox, who felt that one. Q. Dashes away from Magnum. Flip it high. Knox still out there. Down to the crease. And Robinson had his stick checked. So it's Snake Island ball here. And I'm not counting out these Muskies here oh. tonight by any means. They've been impressive so far here, especially with the schedule they had to start this tournament. You couldn't ask for a tougher one. And they came through at 2-1. and one. As Atwood had his pocket picked. As they played the very first game of the tournament, they got past Tuscarora 10-7. to seven. They dropped their next outing against the Mohawks 8-6. to six. But then they followed that up with an identical score, eight to six over Six Nations. And that's where their two and one record stands. Lanchbury, blind pass there for Dowick. Late in the clock now for Q. And he tried to Ooh. find Lanchbury in behind the defense and almost did. But 225 and clock ticking here as Skyler Thomas comes back in. And they're going to need something out of 66 offensively here tonight. All hands on deck for the Muskies. Thomas down to the crease. Here's the chance. <laughs> and it's in for Rice. That's Jake Rice on the offensive end. You were looking for some magic. Pretty nice pass Thomas. there. Oh, my goodness. Get what do you look at that one. What he lacks in size makes up for skill and lacrosse iq and toughness as he takes that bump on the back nice finish though from rice in tight indeed back to center we go in a one goal across game with two minutes to go now and you had a feeling this was going to be a tight battle here between the rock and the muskies coming into this one 16 13 your shots oakville who lead by one and it's the Muskies with a chance to tie here. And Stevie Keel. Keel a load. Scores! Well, that escalated quickly. And now what's going on? The referees want to talk it over. Oakville not happy. And what do they call it? No goal? Oh, too many men offensively. That call coming late, and Galiwade and Shooter are hot. I did. Can we back it up and get a count here okay. of how many bodies? There's two, three, four coming on. There's five. There's six. Good call from the officials. Yep. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, there's 
It's a lot of. <laughs> yeah, there's six in your shot right there. <laughs> I'm surprised there. it took that long for our officials. It's a lot of muskies out on the green turf. It's good if you're fishing. If you're trying to score a, a clean lacrosse goal, not, not so much. Sean Grenier, Kyle Kenry, our two officials on the floor, both from Ontario. Hayden Laporte. Collecting the free paycheck. Dowick scores. Oh, man. Count them up. Do they go? Oh, no, one, two, three. <laughs> There's five out there for the Rock. But how about that? A goal from Keogh taken off the board. And I'm not sure the extra player had any effect on the goal that Keogh. Unsportsmanlike. Sorry, Jumbo. I just yeah, want to no, reach I in see there. it. But that is a. But then insult the injury. Dowick back the other way. Pops it home. And instead of a tie game, it's a two-goal game. That's tough. And a penalty on top of that going to Jerry Stotts. Who's one of your top penalty killers. I mean, you cannot allow this to un unravel things. Instead, you've got to keep deep. your emotions in check right here in this situation, especially late in the period. Even if you get one against you right here, you still just got to play through all the emotions right now. Lanchbury right on, and Demu the pad stop in a souvenir for somebody behind the Cool Bet logo here at the track. Stay cool. Bet responsible. <laughs> Lindner will pick it up. Here's Andrew Q on the skip to Lanchbury on a quick stick and a good stop for Demu once again as the Rock really pressuring here with this man advantage. From the point, Q. Scores. And that's what this Oakville Rock team will do to you. They just keep coming at you offensively in waves, and when they get their opportunity on the man up, they are tough to stop. 5-2 now, Oakville. You just can't give them chance after chance after chance, especially if 42's got the ball on his stick. His second goal of the game. Now up to 12 tucks on the tournament. He's really found his stride here in that the presence. Already seven goals in this opening period. And I thought, you know, Dave Mood and Rose coming into this one, two of the top goaltenders here at the tournament. We could be in for a low scoring affair. Does not seem to be the case here so far. Long way to go. Vaughn Harris. A late one here for the Muskies would make him feel better, but that shot nowhere near the target from Brian Rice. 10 on the shot clock, 18 on the game clock, and Oakville trying to set themselves up for final possession. And do they want timeout now is the question. 8.4, 200 feet to go, and Nick Rose says, yeah, we want timeout here, and we want one more before the period's over. A 20-shot period here for Oakville so far. I think they want a couple more seconds added on the clock. I don't know if they're going to get it. Yeah, it looked like 8.4 to me when the possession change happened. And we'll see if the officials want to tack on a little time. You hear the beeps? I don't know if they're resetting. Oh, resetting it to 9 point. Nope. 9 flat. Looks, Looks like to be the flat. case. I mean, the way that these guys have been setting up their offense, that's more than enough time for them to get something done here. You're going to look at the Oakville bench. you got to look at the Muskies bench. And the Sports and Medicine Wellness Center here at the Toronto Rock. That thing's brand new inside the track here. And all the amenities for the boys. Corey Small getting a little treatment earlier today. I might just book myself a massage after day four wow. on, you know, my 10th game or whatever here. Was, uh, it might be time. I was thinking the exact same thing. As long as it's not you giving it to me, I, <laughs> I might pay for it. Here we go. Four seconds. Got to go quick. Lanchberry down to the crease. And Daymood was there in time. But the ball will go out of play. And we will go to break because we're at the end of one period, I believe. Yes, we are. Bench is empty. And they'll head for the locker room. We will head for break as Oakville outshoots Snake Island in that opening period, 20-14. to 14. 
and have a three goal lead after one period of play by a score of five to two. Nicely underway here in the final game of day number three. Oakville, five, Snake Island two. We're back in 10 minutes here on the JVI Sports Network to the President's Cup in Oakville.
We are back inside the track in Oakville, Ontario, and ready for period number two on day three for the final game. Between the Snake Island Muskies and the Oakville Rock, both teams two and one coming in. Oakville holding the 5-2 lead after 20 minutes of play out, shooting Snake Island 20-14. Blow the whistle, let's play some lacrosse. We're underway here in the second. It's Jake Elliott, Pat Gregoire with you. As a good old-fashioned stalemate here for the opening face-off. Who's going to win, Pat? Fred Hanser. <laughs> Still not done yet. No, I might lose this. And Never a doubt. finally, Oakville will secure. Now <laughs> comes Andrew Q, who had a good opening period here for the Rock. He's got it in his pocket right now. Might want to get on the hands here at 42. And forces a bad pass that's picked off. Nice job from Tyler Holtz. We'll wait for changes here as on comes Skylar Thomas, who set up Jake Rice for a beauty in that opening period. Here's Joe Hall on a toe drag. Gets inside. Joe Hall lost the handle at the last second. And then looked like he was first to touch through the crease. The play will continue. And it's a new 30 here for Snake Island. He'll set the pick for Thomas. Feet to the crease for Firth. And Nick Rose, who's stopped 13 out of 15 shots in that opening period, makes another save there. Vaughn Harris had a check free by Cues, playing some defense. And Vaughn Harris just stole the ball right back. Now trying to get to the top of the goal there. And gets called in the crease. Q will stay out there. And a supremely fit lacrosse player is Andrew Q. Which will help you in a tournament like this where you're playing day after day after day. And especially for Oakville who are playing their second game here today at the Prezi. Can't imagine how yeah, tiring that must be. Oh, yeah. I heard Brian Shanahan earlier this week saying, and this is a guy who's won a billion Minto Cups saying that. This is the toughest trophy in lacrosse to win. Yeah, I don't disagree one bit. Chance for side. I get the whole fact that you only have a certain amount of years to win a Minto, and it's no easy path to claim the Lord. But, man, when you're going day after day, no days off, two-a-days, and the physical nature of the style of play here in the President's oh, yeah. Cup. It's a beating. It's nasty. Reza Terrets right on. Rose, another stop. And here's Zabo. And he'll pull high and wait for support to come on. There's no transition there. And here comes Knox, big-bodied left-hander. He'll join Andrew Q on this near side as Lanchbury will dirt wide, flip it, Dalwick, one more to the crease all day. And maybe taking a second too long there was Kiernan. Going to get another chance, though. And Damu would stop that. How? How does that not go in? Unbelievable. Wow. I know uh, that's my literal job is to explain, <laughs> yeah. but I just don't know. <laughs> it's our third game of the day. It's okay. Speechless, really. Harris. Looking for a cutter going, and an overshot Thomas. Keel had a chance at it. Down to three on the shot clock. And again, Snake Island come up empty on offense. Man, this Oakville defense is playing great, and that's with yeah. their, arguably without their best defender in Callum Jones. He's not in the lineup here. Well, tonight. I'm trying to decide, like, what is the strength or the identity of this Oakville team? You know, Nick Rose, I think it starts with him in the crease. He's the backbone, and you know you're going to get a chance to win pretty much every game with 66 between your pipes. But I can't just really decide if it's offense or defense that makes this team go. And I think it can change on a nightly basis or a game-by-game -game situation as Ryan Lynchberry from the outside makes it 6-2. Certainly helps when you have two players now 
19 points for Lansbury, 20 for Q. And Q is really starting to gain some confidence and it's just bleeding right into Lansbury's yeah, game. We both kind of felt like that opening night, 5-4, Dusty Hill kind of stole the show and some off nights from some guys that just weren't clicking. No. But I don't think there was a whole lot of concern out of Matt Sawyer and company or even Jamie Dowick about that opening game performance. And seemingly the Ontario champs and the host team here have found their stride. And now we're clicking on all cylinders. We have a four goal lead here over the Muskies. Almost 40 points between those two guys. It's it's more than I had in my career. Back <laughs> in. Here's Thomas turning the corner. Penalty bids, different story. Points, <laughs> not so much. Brandon Slade with a heavily wrapped left knee. Back to, your, back to your question, though, about mm. what is the strength or the identity. I think the strength is that they really don't have any weaknesses. Like, they, from top to bottom, they're just so balanced. Look out. That one almost snuck through Dave Mood's five hole from Knox. By the way, we asked the question earlier, the next Buffalo Bandit jersey to go to the rafters in Bandit Land. Got another submission uh, from a pretty prominent lacrosse guy. I won't name names. Okay. Mark Steinhaus. Oh, gosh. Yeah, no brainer. Gonna get Steiner up there. I think the only reason it's probably not retired is because he hasn't officially retired. Exactly. <laughs> Just call it, Mark. What a career. Oh. No doubt. A lot of points in number nine stick. Electrifying player. Especially for a guy that didn't pick up the game until he was like 16. I know. Firth just wide and a loose ball up for grabs here and it's gathered in by Oakville and McKenna you almost wonder if he played in today's game would he be even better I, I think so I, which is crazy a to less think. clutching and grabbing the quicker and yeah the fact that the two the two-way players so so valuable yeah, and now, the way right? he transformed his game later in his career from being just purely offense to you know then working out the back gate and transition and all the rest of it Could probably ask the same question about the toronto rock because they got a bunch hanging right here inside the track but a laundry list of players that were probably eligible oh, yeah. to go up Nick Rose will go to the Oakville bench as they'll bring on the extra attacker. And Q will send it to the crease and off the post for Lanchbury. Timeout down on the floor for the goaltenders. A little early in the second period. And Rose was just on the bench, so he doesn't need a sip. And maybe the loneliest place on the roster here for the Rock is the backup goaltender here for Oakville who might not see a single second in this tournament because Nick Rose just loves to play and they want to ride Rosie now unless they need to I don't think he's coming out Damood it's actually not a water break needs some attention to one of his leg packs okay there we go as the official will monitor that as the game previous we saw our first goalie pad check courtesy of the Six Nations Rivermen trying to get Christian Delbianco on something and uh, Delbs came right back out and was deemed legal and it ends up backfiring on Six Nations who dropped their third game of the week you did mention Sammy Haynes and the lack of action. I do believe he played five minutes in okay. yesterday's game. My apologies. A little bit of a break for Rose. My apologies to Sammy. Still wasn't much. I know what you're saying, though. Nick Rose is going to... He's a workhorse. Yeah. Power play for the Rock. Motion starts. Cue to the point. Down to the crease. Wide open in front is Knox, and he's denied by Damu. On a good set play there from the Oakville power play unit. Dowick. Q. 
Fires, and that one will fender off the end wall and back out to center with still plenty of time on the shot clock. As back in he comes. Back in is 42, by the way. I think he was wearing 24 last night. As he switched it up. Lintner and Damon falling down wow. made another stop. He's keeping the Muskies in this thing right now. Yeah, he really is. Another big stop there. 20 saves now. As the shot total is up to 26-17 now for the Rock. A minute to kill off here. To the Muskies penalty to Shane Francis. Shot clock down to 13 and Snake Island in no particular hurry to go to goal. Keel with a little bit of room. Backs away. Oh, the follow through was hellacious. Oh boy. And man, oh man. I don't think that was intentional by Keel by any means as he hit Q right in the head. He's going to go give him a pat on the backside. That hurts. I think Keogh's going to be okay. And you can tell Keogh felt a little bad about that one. The officials. Follow through, I think, is actually still a penalty in the sport of cross, But I cannot remember the last time a follow through was called. I think that's maybe what Kyle Kenry had a quick If there discussion. was ever a time to call it, that was going to be it. And it didn't get called. So. Lanchbury at the point now. He'll send one into the top corner on a low to high riser. And forget it for David. Nobody's stopping that thing. What a shot from Ryan Lanchburg. And made it look easy. 7-2. Just watch the release here. Yeah, this is a thing of beauty. Look at low to high. Lanchbury launches it in the upper half of that goal. My goodness, I'm running out of Start things to say release. about that, that Launch, release. Launchberry. Launchberry, I like it. Halls with a face-off win. And the Muskies need a goal. 40. To kind of stem the tide here and stay within striking distance. They're going to get a power play now. 42 points between Q and Lanchberry. Well, you want the secret to stop the Oakville Rock? There you go. Try and shut down Lanchbury and Q. Easier said than done as Keel inside. Can't get a pass. Rose off a good look, but here comes the penalty call. As they'll go to Adam J. Who will go from playing with the Toronto Rock last season to the Saskatchewan Rush this year. But apparently he's going to stay like he works here at the track and the store. And he's going to stay around town. He's got a significant other in the area. And... I think uh, him and JD came to terms. And he's going to stay around in town and be an import into Saskatchewan. And he's excited about it. You know, he's down the depth chart there on the Toronto Rock defense, and I think he'll move up the depth chart in Saskatchewan. And just a little more opportunity to play. I think he's going to fit in there beautifully. Right. And, I mean, even though he's moving up in the depth trip, I still think that's a very good defense Saskatchewan has. Thomas just missing. And Toronto gets a pretty nice piece coming back the other way in the mailman. Yeah, that's all right. Look out. That one deflecting off the stick of Thomas from the pass from Reza Terrence. And now Rez will send it wide, and Firth will send it to the goal, and Rose will stop it. Knocked ahead here on a smack pass. Slade will, well, he tried to one-hand it, and now he's got it. Starting to feel for Firth here. He's having... Slade right Ooh. on. Dave made a glove stop. I going to say Firth, he just, he can't buy one this tournament. Three assists, no goals. Not for lack of effort or, or chances. A little snake bit for the Snake Island Muskie. Oh, I like it. Still time on the power play here. For the Muskies as Reza Terrence drags in. Here's Harris to Reza Terrence. Corkscrew shot. And that hit pipe. New 30 for Snake Island. Reza Terrence down to the crease. Up to Vaughn Harris. He'll come over the top of the shot. And that one wide on the short side. Gets his own rebound. And Rose will step in front of that. And now a lean here for Chris Weir to push tempo. He's got a man in McKenna coming with him. But the Muskies are back. 
And penalty time to Jay down to eight seconds as it looks like Oakville will kill it off and remain up five. There's the final game of day three. Crosses the midway mark. Day four, another loaded schedule with four big ones on deck. It'll begin as Ladner will play their two a day. They'll play the morning game and the night game. First up is the Tomahawks of Tuscarora. Then it's Edmonton Snake Island. Six Nations Kahnawake and then Ladner Oakville to finish off day four. And to finish off the round robin portion of the Prezi. It's Joe Hall from long range. We'll get the reset here for Snake Island as we hit 9 o'clock Eastern time here in Oakville. Hewitt into the middle. He's been impressive for Snake Island. Atwood, the shot, the rebounds. And Rose will gather that one. And now what do we got? They're going to say Snake Island ball on an interference call on Oakville. Yeah, Hewitt, seven points through three games. I believe he was draft eligible last year. I would not be surprised if we see him end up on a camp roster in the NLL somewhere this year or next Worth year. Worth a shot. Yep. Thomas. It's a good pick. Fires Rose the save. Rebound chance for Terrence Can't direct it in on goal. And look out. There's a whack on the back from Thomas. And Oakville's got it. And Slate will settle things down here for Josh Dowick. Marley Angus, who hasn't played a ton here tonight, I would say. But he's out there now, number nine in white. And a spinning shot from Lintner handled easily by Damon. As Nate Woods will break away. Harris will come to the ball, 20 on the shot clock, 7.20 on the game clock. There's Vaughn Harris into the middle. Fake the pass. Now he'll look towards. Keeps going to Von Harris and got a low shot off the toe of Rose. And a new 30 on the sheet. You can feel Snake Island start to push here a little bit. They're coming up with second, third opportunities. And getting some decent looks, but they haven't been able to find the answer on Rose yet. There's another drive, and Rose will pop in front of that one. As he looks to find it in his leg pad. About as efficient as a goaltender you are going to find. Oh, yeah. Minimal movement. The angles are exceptional. And it's so frustrating because, again, he with that minimal movement, sometimes when he lets in the outside shot, there's not much movement. The, the it doesn't folks, look like he's doing it. Yeah, the folks that maybe don't understand the game quite as much think he's not trying or should have moved. But, I mean, that, maybe a little susceptible to the dunk. Yes. I'd maybe, you know, put that as his, his sure. weakness. But... I think what makes Nick Rose such a good goaltender is his mental game. He is just so level-headed, never gets rattled, and always stays in the moment. And that's what you need out of your goaltender. I put Del Bianco in that conversation as well. Like, just you never see them get off kilter, whether they're up 10 or down 10. Yep. That's a great point. Chance here, maybe. A duck under. A reach and a pop-up save there for Damut as he steers it out of play. It'll stay here with the Rock. But we'll get a referee's timeout. And I think another sip of water for the goaltenders here who will gladly take a little hydration break in period two. If you want to get a hold of us here at the President's Cup, you can get a hold of Pat Gregoire at P. Greggy. And yours truly at PXP, the number four sports. We've been getting... Great interactions all day, all week long here at the President's Cup, and we fully encourage you to continue to do that. It's Matt Sawyer into his bunch here in the second period, and Josh Sanderson doing the same. Coaching up the boys here at the President's Cup. How about those two? Both Orangeville Northman legends, and now here at the President's Cup, trying to win a championship in Oakville. I mean, both uh, Josh, obviously Terry's son and a mm -hmm. direct disciple, but Matt Sawyer, almost like Terry's illegitimate son. <laughs> yeah. The way he learned from T and, yeah. and came up through the ranks. 
And he's been coaching the game for a long time now. He's one of my you know, favorite guys to just talk shop about with lacrosse. And I know it's his favorite thing is not talking with the media, but he always does a great job taking time out before rock games. And yeah, I've wrangled him on down. Lax class a couple of times there for Matty Sawyer. But he's great. It's no, great. He's, he's fantastic. You ask him one thing and he gets going and it's it's a lot of fun. I mean, there's... He, he loves, loves the game of lacrosse. Right man in charge, for sure. Six on the shot clock as Reza Terrence was trying to get to the top of the crease. But it is just suffocating this rock defense right now. Slade on the go. Feed it off. One more. Drop it down. And picked off out of midair by Luke Magnum. How about that? Didn't even make it to the goaltender. Right into the pocket of 45. Pride of Manitoba. He is putting on a great performance here at the Prezies. The footwear is on point two for Megs. Uh, Skyler Thomas on an inside roll and a trail check there from Weir. Busted it up at the last second. Back the other way we go. Off the bench quickly is Lanchberry with a quick take. And Demut able to do enough to keep that one out. And then a quick stick there for the goaltender to trap that one before it gets away. It is quiet in here right now for this pivotal 2-1 and one game here between these two game, two teams. And you, can, you know, it's intense down there, but it's quiet. It's like a, I don't know how to explain it. It's, it's eerie a little bit. Here's a chance. Oh, what a feed from Hall to Jake Rice. But there was the Oakville Rock goaltender, Nick Rose, once again to foil the party. So Andrew Q out for another shift. He'll be joined by Knox as they go ready strong. 12 on the shot clock. Rink wide for Lindner. Q shoots. Damut stops. And a loose ball gathered in by Tyler Halls who outlets quickly here. Got a man off the Muskies bench now. Chance right there for Firth. And again, just can't buy one for 19. And he probably won't get a better look than that here tonight. Oh, a return feed from Lanchbury was the right play. But I don't think Knox was ready for it. <laughs> and you heard Oops. his sentiments after not having a stick up. Should be a back end call here on Oakville. And it will be. There's another quick moving period here, down to 310 already. It's flying. Harris off to Thomas. Here comes the pick from Rice. They've been working well together. Quick take. And Rose, a stick save and a quick outlet now. As Burns will run underneath this one. Q filling the lane, but off the bench it's Lindner. And he runs hard into the crease as Demu shouldered it away. And a nice loose ball from Andrew Q. And now what do we got? Uh, timeout here for the Sneak Island goaltender to get his net back on his goal line. He's getting tied a little bit of everything. He's had the flow. It's had the slow five-on-five five set. Minimal special teams, but great goaltending. I've really enjoyed this game here. Despite the 7-2 score, I felt like this is a pretty tight game. Lindner again. Just walked right down Main Street. And a new 30 here for Angus and company. Oh, good stick check there from Thompson, but Lanchbury will run. Linder over the shoulder. Oh. And Damood was ready for it. Here's another guy I think has been a little bit snake bit in this tournament is Dan Linder. That guy can fill it up when he gets going. I think he had three goals in the first period last game and then just completely got shut down after that. He he could have a boatload of goals. He's had his chances, and here's Reza Terrence and Nick Rose. As nonchalant as you could be with an excellent stick stop. Man, he looks easy. He makes it look so easy sometimes as a goaltender. Yeah, when he gets into that mode, it's just it seems like he's virtually unbeatable making those saves from the outside, but then when he starts making the athletic ones, you know you're in for a long night. 
Yeah, there's one thing I know. You're not winning the President's Cup without top flight goaltending as that one trickles past Damood, who just couldn't find it. Oh, it's a crushing goal. Dalek and The Rock will take it, and they will extend their lead to six. It just lay there in the crease, and Damood, looking down, just could not find the ball at his feet. We'll see Caught right up here. in the pad. And by the time he saw it, it was too late. That's an unfortunate bounce for Damoot and the Muskies. 8-2 game now, but nice move by Dalek to get enough space and create his own shot. I think a lot of the knock against Josh Dalek's game is that, oh, he's a spot-up shooter. He can't really create his own shot. But, boy, he's becoming more and more of a rounded player. He's great without the ball. You know, a guy that really set some nice picks and I think this year for the Toronto Rock with the departure of Dan Dawson he's going to have to be called upon more this year to, to play a bigger role Dan who? Never heard of him <laughs> <laughs> you look at the two remaining games for each of these teams and not an easy road for either one of them they no. both have Ladner left on their schedule Ladner 3-0 Wagon Oakville, their other game against Kahnawake, who looked way better yep. today than they did the previous day. And for Snake Island, Edmonton. Oh, here we go. As Magnum. And some punches being thrown here. Look out. Oh, some grabbing of the face masks here, and they're not done yet. But for Snake Island, as I think Cooler Heads shall prevail here, I think that Edmonton game is the one that they need to circle on their schedule, saying this is where, you know, if they can get past Ladner, great. But Edmonton is the game that they're going to need to win if they can't come back here tonight to punch their ticket into that final four. Well, Edmonton, they obviously are circling that one on their schedule well, for sure, as well. Yeah, they're That's going to feel the same game way. for them, yeah. right? So I, th I th you, you bring up a great point. That is going to be a pivotal, pivotal game. You know, they're watching this one. You got to think they're pretty disappointed with the the effort against Oakville today. Yeah, yeah. especially from an offensive standpoint. And man, you know, you think about day one of the tournament as well, where they had Ladner Pioneers on the ropes in that game and end up losing it by a single goal. Yeah. And may they look back on that one and think what could have been. Timeout down on the floor here with 17.5 to go in the period. As the temperature of this one just getting a couple of degrees hotter late in the period. The DJ cooling off with uh, this song selection, <laughs> I would dare say, Pat. I... As we flash back to, what, 1992 or something? Stats crew, when did uh, Easy Rob, what is it, DJ Rob Basins? <laughs> it takes two. Look it up. There's a big final possession here with the lead at six. It might be enough here for Oakville tonight. But if you're the Snake Island Muskies, you've got to get out of this period and not surrender another. What, I want to know what year it came out, though. Does it say? Oh, right there. 1988 Pac-Red World. Wow. Song's older than me. <laughs> that makes me feel super old. <laughs> I'm sorry. This is a banger back in my day, though. I will say that. I think it's still a banger. Yeah. It's debatable. <laughs> Here we go. Everybody spread out. Dowick had his pass deflected. Lintner trying to keep the play alive here. Rose is on the bench. They turn it over. Maybe a chance here for the... Oh, big hit at center. Knocked ahead. And time will run out. As an opportunity just about presented itself there for the Muskies. With some solid defense, but all for naught. As the period comes to an end with Oakville. Leading Snake Island by six. As Littner walking down into the Snake Island end here. 
and had a few choice words for some Muskies before they head for the room. We will head for break here with one more period to go on day number three. Oakville out shooting Snake Island 38-34. They lead them by six, eight to two, with 20 minutes to go from the President's Cup on day three. We'll have it for you in 10 minutes' time. Keep it locked right here on the JVI Sports Network.
We take you back to center floor here at the Oakville track for the President's Cup. Blow the whistle, let's play some lacrosse. We're underway in the final period of day three. And the Oakville Rock trying to get their third win of the tournament and their third straight as they have the six-goal lead over the Snake on the Muskies. With 20 to go, Jake Kelly, Pat Gregmar with you to round out day three here at the Prezi. What's the message for both coaching staffs after 40 minutes? Well, I might have just changed as Knox will find the five hole and biggest lead of the night now for Oakville at seven. But I'll still ask you the same question. What is Glee with a Mitchell saying? What's Matt Sawyer saying in the intermission, Pat Gregoire? I think Matt Sawyer saying continue, keep pushing, keep putting the ball in the back of the net as we see Knox here with, believe it or not, his first goal of the tournament. One of the top prospects in last year's draft. But I think it's, remember, we're in a tournament here. We, we have to collect as many goals as possible, keep as many out of our net, because if we do want to battle with Ladner for first, it could come down to goals and against. On the flip side, I think the Muskies are, are saying simply, we got 20 minutes here, guys. We got to put our foot to the gas. We, got, we have to help out our goalie. We've kind of let him to dry no offense in well, that second period and the other thing is here in this final period whether they come back all the way in this game or not you want to play you know your best period of lacrosse leading into day yep. four where the next two games are really going to matter for this snake island team if they go on to lose this one and similar to the rock although you're not winning the game you still need that goals against average to be a little bit tighter. Skyler Thomas hit the post. And man, her check along the wall there. But here's Adam Jay gliding through center. My apologies, I should have said the goals for different goals for against differential, not the We all knew what you meant, yeah. Patty. Long day. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Long day. And another one to come on day four as Pat and I will have the three final games for you on day four, as well as Lacrosse boss, Matty Carrick, and Brent Shanahan will have the opener to kick off day four tomorrow. <laughs> whack, whack on Josh Dowick. Undeterred, we'll head for a change. As that day four schedule for you one more time here. Tomorrow we'll see Ladner and Tuscarora kick off the day. Then it's Edmonton, Snake Island. Six Nations, Kahnawagi, and we'll wrap up with Ladner versus Oakville. It's going to be a banger of the day. That last game, though, don't want to downplay the rest of the schedule because there's some really good games, but... They're all going to mean something. And I lied. That's not the final day of round-robin competition. Thursday will be, of yes. course, and only a two-game slate on Thursday which will feature Six Nations and Tuscarora Oakville against Kahnawagi. So we just got to grind through one more day, Pat, and then we're on easy street now. And the games will be so much fun and so important by then. I mean, it's been, it, it has been a blast calling these games, and we're not even close to being done. There is nothing yet. like it. There really is. There's uh, getting lots of messages coming in through the DMs and texts and what have you. And uh, our buddy Evan sending out a tweet about the average viewership here at the President's Cup over the first three days. And we are doing some big numbers here at the Prezi on the JVI Sports Network. Here comes Brian Rice. Scores! Well, that one found the hip side of Nick Rose. And it's back to a six-goal lead here for Oakville. Brian Rice getting his fifth goal of the tournament. Nine points. See, there's the moving pick. Brian Rice picks up the loose ball, and he is up and out. Getting it done in transition. Right on the hip. That is such a difficult stop for a goaltender to make. And I think I read the schedule out in the wrong order. I'm being corrected here, Patty, so I want to correct this. Okay. Right off the bat, 11 o'clock game is the Mohawks versus the Miners. Okay. 2 o'clock game is the Pioneers. I can't say Pioneers. Pioneers against the Muskies. Then the Rivermen versus the Tomahawks. We will round out. What am I reading here? I'm reading Thursday. 
<laughs> Maybe I only have two games. We're doing this on the oh, fly. Jake. My apologies. I'm reading my own His schedule. Not schedule. The, <laughs> did, I, did we mention it's a long day here? Let's, let's try okay. that one more time. I'd like to do that one more time if we can. Wednesday. <clears throat> That's tomorrow, right? Yep. Okay, I'm, I'm one for one here so far. Let's watch this opportunity here potentially for the Rock on a breakaway. And yeah, not going to force the issue. And they'll pull back high. All right, 11 o'clock tomorrow, Tuscarora Ladner, Snake Island Edmonton, Kahnawake Six Nations, Oakville Ladner. I had that right for our Wednesday slate. Thank you very much. Thursday is another full game or full slate of games. I'm only doing two. Yeah, I don't know how many you're doing. I don't really I think care. Two. All right. I think two. Thursday, we'll see four games, however. Beginning at 11 o'clock with the Mohawks against the Miners. 2 o'clock game is Ladner versus the Muskies. 5 o'clock game, Riverman, Tomahawks. 8 o'clock game, Oakville, go. Mohawks. We got it. And we got some action after the whistle. <laughs> Lindner, who has been taking a bit of a beating here tonight, I would say, on the offensive end, just getting a little retribution and he'll be off to the penalty box for that little incident. Yeah, we'll take a look here. A little pop right on the hip. Oh, ice bag, please. Yeah. They got a bit of a smirk on his face there. I mean, we, we know it. Well, oh, we've seen it in other games that, you know, games start to get a little lopsided, and they know all this sort of stuff adds up over the course of the week and you're going to take your licks you're going to give some out and you're going to get punished here there's, there's you're not coming out of the president's cup without some bumps and bruises a good stop for rose a power play here for the muskies harris firth looking short side nothing doing chance for thomas and he reached into the crease for the ball he doesn't think he did But the referee's opinion is the one that matters. Can't believe I just said that. Good for you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Good for you. What kind of shoes is he wearing down there? <laughs> it doesn't matter. Five. That's the inside joke if you're watching early. Here's Robinson slicing through. And Damood with a good stretching stop. Magnum will pull the ball out and... Look at the speed here from the big fella. That's Oakville with a man on the yeah. <laughs> They got it. They got it. <laughs> the crowd doesn't like it. Keo can't hit the target. It's six on five here for the Muskies. Thomas and Rose will soak up. No call. What? What? I swear I saw an arm I off. Thought that, I... that could have not have been for a 30 reset. And Magnum wow. just had a breakaway taken away by a clear too many bank call on Oakville that went undetected somehow, some way. I don't know because of the way. That I thought the back official was calling it. It should have been this guy on the near side that didn't see it. And now Lanchbury takes a couple of chomps from Stunts. I don't know if it's because Sanderson and Mitchell can't quite see from the angle, but there wasn't much argument from them, but... Holy. That was like two to that was three feet, maybe. <laughs> Reza Terrets off the elbow of Rose. Harris will get a new 30 here for the Muskies. I thought Magnum was in cold as Lindner released from the penalty box. Hashtag justice for Max. Get it, I want to see folks. the big fella on the breakaway. He's already got one goal this tournament. Reza Terrets again and Rose again. Shots 42-41 Oakville, but they're out by six here as they have the Muskies stuck on three. And out Thompson up to center with the Woody on cue. And here's where the game management as a coach comes into play. How much tax do you want to put on your offensive players here in the third period? Because it's starting to get chippy. Look at Magnum just whacking away here on Knox as Robinson takes a shot on the near side. And for Knox, he's just going to move his feet. Like, he can't just stand there and take punishment. 
Ow. Oh. oh, man. That was nasty. And I'm sorry. And I, I hate to single a guy out here, but he should be gone from the game for that. That was using the wooden stick as a weapon oh. on Andrew Q. Right on his knee. Watch this. Not that one. This one right here. Ouch. Oh, man, that hurts. Oh. And as physical and as violent as this game can be sometimes, you don't want to see stuff like that. I'm sorry. I don't. Anyways, and I'm sure Andrew Q's leg doesn't either. Shane Francis got his money's worth for that two minutes. But I guess the best way here for Oakville to respond to that is to stick it in the back of the goal. And they do. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Lanchbury with a missile. Lanchbury with four. <laughs> uh, yeah. Here it comes right here. Dowick to Lanchbury, and it's one pump, two, cannonade. Could not place that any better. It's not just precision. It's not just power. It's all packaged together. Lanchbury, just a deadly shooter for this Oakville Rock team. Oh, my goodness. 10-3 with eight minutes gone here in the third. And again, like we saw in the game previous between Six Nations and Ladner, now is the time here in the third period where both teams keep your head on a swivel here, boys. Because it can come from any direction at any time. Lansbury and Q now both with eight apiece. Keel got a good pick from Harris. He'll get the return feed, and he dropped it. And unlike the Muskies and Kahnawake and Six Nations, no wooden sticks on that Oakville bench. At least I haven't seen any yet. But I wouldn't be surprised if they have a couple of stash back there. Wouldn't be surprised either. And that's usually the way, you know, when your star offensive players are getting liberties taken against them, the defense down on the other end, that's exactly what they'll do. They'll go find Joe Reseteritz and Stephen Keogh and Vaughn Harris and look to inflict a little pain back the other way. Joe Hall off the elbow of Rose. No Bill Hostrauser in tonight's game. Yeah, I think he's of probably wishing that he was in this one. Speaking of inflicting pain. Ooh. Billy Holstrauser doing some damage to the face of Matt Kim this morning. If you haven't seen that, search your Instagram feeds. It'll pop up. And he went to town. It was not a pillow fight. There was some serious bombs landed from right. Billy Holstrauser. Good on Matty Kim for stepping <laughs> yeah. in and stepping up, but Absolutely. that's not the guy you want to do it with. Q back out. Good news for Rock fans. Because again, Q getting some attention. And this is where the referees are going to earn their paycheck at the President's Cup in games like this. 10-3 Oakville. Thomas searching Deed up there by Q. Six on the clock. He'll fire. And Rose. In no particular hurried outlet. As he'll make another stop. He's turned away 41 of 44 sent his way. Yeah, the three spot on the board for the Muskies. Not for a lack of chances. Here it's comes just... another penalty. And yep. behind the net. And, I, like, I, I get why this sort of thing happens. Like, it's a long tournament. You want to wear these guys down. But on the flip side of things, like, these are all grown-ass men that have been playing this game a long time. And I don't think in a tournament like this, like, you're not, you're not going to intimidate anybody. You know, they've all been through these situations. Right. And they're not going to shy away just because they're taking some slashes and cross-checks here. 
Well, and we're seeing that Oakville, you mentioned it before the ball, went in the back of the neck last time this power play. They're just going to make you pay on this power play. They have no problem. And, I, you know, I haven't seen a lot of it out of the rock, and I don't think that's the way this team is, is really built. And I don't, like, I don't want people to think I'm just sitting here picking on Snake Island because they're not the only team that has kind of taken to these tactics. And I've been around, done enough President's Cups in my career where, like, this is not uncommon. So it's not surprising to see. I just kind of want to make all that clear here as we continue on. As Dalek whistles one on goal that Damood will steer aside. Look out, that one will stay in play here for Q. But you know if this is a 10-8 or a 10-7 game, that stuff's not happening. And now it's an 11-3 game as Dalek gets one to go. That's his hat trick. They're getting some more extracurriculars. It's been a long day at the President's Cup, and it's getting a little longer here for the Snake Island Muskies, who are down eight now. Another power play marker. A little skip. Dalek, a nice back cut feed. From Knox, third goal of the night for Dalek, five points. And another power play as Stotts off to the penalty box. So possession right after the goal here for Oakville. And if they keep filling it up, you would think sooner or later they, you know, you're going to stop, but it might make it worse. I don't know. Rice knocked down from behind, and we're going to get a penalty here on Andrew Q. Okay. You tell me. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> well, I don't think it was that one. I think it was this one right there. And fair enough. Yep. That will warrant two minutes. Yep. So it's right across the back. Goaltending change for the Muskies. As Kobe Johnson will enter the game. 50 shots faced for Nick Damo. And I think Oakville now, that's three games in a row yeah, where they've right. crested the 50 shot plateau. Rose will gather. As it's four on four here, so no 10 second count on to clear through center. And Marley Angus will take his time. And there is three wooden sticks out on defense right now for the Muskies. Three on the shot clock. Here's a look. And that one's, then they're going to say off of Kobe and out of play. Keep it here with Oakville. No, well, they're going to overrule the call. Okay. I don't know how you do that with the low official right there. But they'll give the ball back to Snake Island. Hall looking. He'll pass off. Harris. He'll fire and score. Top corner for Von Harris as he picked it on the short side. You want to talk about a guy with a smooth release on his outside heater. Von Harris fits the bill. Oh, yes. Yeah. Just shoots it like butter. We're going to look here. Joe Hall getting an assist. Stephen Keogh mucking and grinding, freeing up that space. And look at that release. Just torque. Beautiful shot. Nick Rose read it right. Just, just a bit too late. That's just a goal scorer getting it done with some time and space. So 11-4, and Oakville ball off the faceoff. We'll bring out the offense here. But I'm seriously considering Matt Sawyer start playing a few guys from the back eight out the front door here tonight for the rest of this one. As Lintner takes some more punishment. Nate Woods off to the cubicle of Shane. <laughs> I 
Scoreboard's getting a workout here on day three. I will oh, say is that. It ever. Lanchbury with room. Oh, he had Johnson leaning and just missed. We have the perfect angle up here for that one. It just sailed wide the far pipe. Hard pass for Angus. One man out of the box for the Muskies. Five hole. Count it. Lynch has got another. One away from the sock trick. We still got six minutes and 26 well, what seconds. What did we see, Pat? It was six. Two after 20, 7-2 after 40. Just one goal in the second period. And now we got another seven here in the third and still six and a half to go. Oh, we talked to, look at how, look at the deception. He makes that look like he's going to go high to high. And just at the last second, just a little flick of the wrist, it goes down. Bouncer and in, 11 points for Lance Baron now. And the evening now over for Nick Rose in goal. Uh, Sammy Haynes will enter the game here for the Rock. Lanchbury just surpassed his teammate Andrew Q for the tournament lead. And now run points. down the point leaders here at the President's Cup as we near the end of day three. Just give me a little refresh here. Okay. Another penalty call coming here against Snake Island. Brian Lanchbury, 25 points. Andrew Q in second with 24. Levi Anderson with 21. Mike Triolo with 18, and then Ryan Benesh with 16 and three. So he's one game less one than game most. One game less. Yeah. So Ladner plays there two games tomorrow. So and then we shall see after day four where everybody sits after an evenly amount of played games. And my apologies also forgot Tyler Pace as well. He's pretty good. Points. And Rob Hellier in seventh, just one point behind. He's only played three games as well. So, Two man advantage for Oakville. Lindner, Dowick, Q, Knox. Dowick looking for another. That one off of Johnson and out. As the old box against the triangle here. Lintner has Johnson dancing in his crease. It's Q down to Dalek. And they got to get a handle on this thing. And I think they're doing the right thing. Just keep sending him to the penalty box. I don't know what else you do unless you just start kicking guys out. Yeah. See it right here. Hack there. Oh, Oof, one to yeah. the head. And Lintner has been a marked man here tonight. He really has. I think with that, too, it's like the ball's already out of his stick. I understand if you want to give him a couple of touches on the follow-through, but ball's nowhere near him. Then you pop him right on the head. Lintner will stay in play as Knox will send it home. Knox, second goal of the game now. Four points on the evening. By far the best game we've seen from him. So one penalty will exit, but they'll still remain up two because the second penalty time did not start until one guy comes out. So it's still five on three here for Oakville. And we mentioned it already. This, this Oakville team has no problem just peppering in goals, trying to get as much... Goals four, keep that goals against down. Have that goal differential on their side if it comes to a tiebreaker, depending on what seating they're going to be sitting in heading into the playoffs. And mind you, not guaranteed to get in the playoffs, but the way they're sitting now, they're sitting very pretty. Seven teams here at the President's Cup. Top four make it into the semifinals. Three will be on the outside looking in. This scoreline not in doubt anymore. As Oakville up by nine with under five to go. They will win this game. And improve their record to three and one. Snake Island will drop to two and two. Ladner at three and oh. Kahnawage at two and one. 
Miners two and two. Six Nations one and three. Tuscarora zero oh and four. Did I got that right? Nailed it. All right. A lot better than the attempt of the schedule. I'll give it. I'll, I'll, I'll be <laughs> honest. I deserve that. <laughs> Adam J out for a power play shift. Oh. And almost had his first goal in the President's Cup right there. I think. He might have had one in transition on day one, actually. Pat, look it up. Stats group. Look right. Yeah, he had one. All right. We're on it. I think Adam J did have one. Yeah, one goal, two assists for three points. And here comes an Oakville rock penalty now as Firth was taken down. So we will play some four on four. As lacrosse fans, this is not the end of the day as far as big lacrosse games go in our country of Canada. As shift your attention to the West Coast and Queen's Park Arena for a 10.30 Eastern start time. As the Langley Thunder and New Westminster Salmon Bellies will play game number seven. And whoever wins that one will host the Man Cup and the Six Nations Chiefs. Should be a good one. Because I'm not going to lie. I'm, <clears throat> excuse me. I'm having. A, I'm choked up, Petty. I'm having a little <laughs> FOMO being here in Oakville. I'm missing that one. But, uh, you know, the trailer is like President's Cup, call game seven. Yeah. Pretty easy decision, but, man, <laughs> I wish I was able to teleport to Queens Park Arena right after this thing. You tell me you can't get the private jet all humped nah, up? I asked. Dowick said no. <laughs> Said he was low on fuel. Gas price is too high. Look out here behind the play. Oh, a punch to the head of Q from Stotts. And they're both going to go. He landed a right, right on the button of Q, who doesn't think he's getting a penalty, but he is. Man, you're going to soak a punch like that. I was looking up floor as we had a chance there for, I think it was Rice and Atwood. President's Cup. <laughs> this is what That's it the is. the Prezies, baby. Yeah. Seriously. And we still got three minutes to get through. As Oakville will get across center. Because they are actually the team that's shorthanded right now. As Weir has a triple closing in. <laughs> I don't mean to chuckle because you know down there on the floor, like every inch matters sort of thing. And it's just, it's, it's become a little bit comical here at the third period of this thing. I don't know how else to describe it. Love to see Joe Hall, though, the veteran, grinding to the very end. And you know he will. Adam J will just hang out. As now it's four on four. And the instruction from the coaching staff is just throw it away and let's play defense here. Joe Hall nose to nose with Sheldon Burns. They will separate. Hall from 40 out. Stopped. And honestly, my neck is going to be sore after this, Pat, watching everything that is going on down the floor. <laughs> snapping left, snapping right. And if this isn't a poster for the eight-second count to get across center, I don't know what is.
At this point, Pat Gregoire, run the clock. Just let the blow the whistle, run the clock, and Kyle, let's get this thing over with. And Kyle Henry's telling a couple of guys here, just your night's over. It's crossed the line a long time ago. Yeah. Like it just this isn't lacrosse anymore. And like I don't want to watch this. I don't know if you like out of fans. This is not what it's about. Playing hard and then there's going way across the line and we are way, way across the line here tonight. And it's a bit of mockery. Oakville's going to be able to chew up a good chunk. Well, again, outcome f four wooden sticks on the defensive end here for Snake Island. Thankfully, they will hang out at center. <laughs> I don't know if I've ever seen this before. Yeah. Where two teams, They're just literally staring each other down for 30 seconds. All right. Final 10 seconds. I need a nap, Pat. There's one final shot. Will mercifully end this game that was dominated offensively by the Oakville Rock. As they go away with the crazy part of it all now is these teams got to line up and shake hands after that. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Keep your helmets and gloves on, boys. Boy, after what was a disappointing start for the hosts in the Ontario Championships. Are they going to shake hands is the question. Yes, they will. I think they will. But after what was such a disappointing start for Oakville, they have completely flipped this tournament on its head and have been dominant in every single game and every single facet. I think if there was any sort of doubt why this team here was one of the favorites to win, I think they've taken that out of everyone's head and, and asserted themselves as a team that is here to win the President's Cup. Yeah, some good sportsmanship here. I like to see it. I mean, I get it. The temperature runs hot. Boys will be boys. The game is over, and you shake hands, and you move along here at the President's Cup. And Snake Island, not done yet. Oakville just put themselves in a real good spot, moving to 3-1. and one. Snake Island still right in the mix at 2-2. Two and two. Definitely the road has gotten a little bit more challenging for the Muskies. I think they're probably thinking day one, that loss to one of their arch nemesis in Kanawaki, thinking that might come back to bite them. As now fate's probably out of their hands. They got to win and hope some magic goes on their side. Jay Rice is your bucket hat winner, courtesy of Bardown Lax for the player of the game. Still waiting for ours to arrive up here to the broadcast booth, Pat. Yeah. And the bar down for the game. Lanchbury. Okay. They finally gave it to a goaltender. As Nick Rose stops 43 of 47 shots and backstops his rock to a nine goal victory here tonight, 13 to 4. Rose, Rose has got to put it on, right? Uh, he was thinking about it. He, nah, ah, there, there we go, go. Rosie boy. Atta boy. All right. Day three is finally done here at the President's Cup. And a wild one it was. Day four. More in store here from Oakville. We will talk to you tomorrow at 11 a.m. Eastern time for game number one and another four games on deck here at the Prezi. Thanks for joining us here on day number three for our entire production crew here at the JVI Sports Network. And for Pat Gregoire, I've been Jake Elliott. And for the fastest game on two feet and for the greater, we'll talk to you tomorrow from the President's Cup in Oakville.
We want to thank our partners for their support of the 2023 President's Cup. Bar Down, Ice River Green Bottle Company, Gatorade, Big Chief Meat Snacks, and the Oakville Pump and Patio. Thank you for your support and helping all the competing teams as they chase the Prezi.